G'day everyone. We're back out here today at the location of the Kelly Cahill UFO encounter which occurred on the 8th of August 1993. Now we were out here about uh, three or four years ago and we did a, uh, a special that went into great detail about the details of the case and uh, recently with the new X-Files series 10 uh, the case happened to get mentioned again by Fox Mulder and uh, he refers to the Kelly Cahill encounter in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia and that was a very very uh, interesting reference because the case has, has died to a certain extent uh, over the preceding years since 1993 so with the mentioning of it on the X-Files it has actually brought it out again and people around the world are again curious as to the case and what happened and uh, potentially you know what everybody who was involved is doing now. So today we've come out here uh, to the exact spot so we're standing here in the area where Kelly and the other two cars would certainly have been on that cold night on the 8th of August 1993 so today's a lovely sunny day and the area is actually quite built up now so as you can see behind me um, there's still a fair bit of open farmland but since 1993 the area has been built out quite considerably there's uh, more hobby farms here more houses have gone up and as you would expect as a city grows so has the area so but in 1993 it would have been fairly much country around this area here would have been dark would have been quiet so uh, nowhere near the amount of cars that we're seeing here today on the Belgrave Hallam Road so behind me in this paddock out here is where the object was it was about 170 meters behind me perhaps a bit off to the right and uh, it was as large as an Olympic swimming pool lit up with orange lights and about the size of two to three story house so it was a very big object and the cars basically pulled up on the opposite side of the road to where I'm standing and the people crossed over to where I am now uh, in three separate groups they didn't come together they did stand in separate uh, in separate groups Kelly and her husband uh, Jane Bill and Glenda further down and then a guy called David behind them so on that night it was a, a, a really was a close encounter and the case really had everything in it so it had missing time it had uh, it had trace evidence it had scoop marks and scarrings and puncture marks on the witnesses uh, it was really it really was a, a, a case that occurs once every 20 years or so so we haven't had one since that time uh, that has been to the same standard and that's where this case potentially has the best chance to be one of the best cases in the world and stands as one of the few examples where you've had independent witnesses uh, who didn't know each other all being at the same place at the same time so that's really one of the key aspects of this case in the area where I'm standing here is approximately the area where Kelly would have walked across the road across to the fence and behind me down the road a little bit further down over here would have been where the second and third car were parked so there's quite a, a big uh, nature reserve across here to the fence but where the road is it's actually uh, quite there's not much to, room to park on that side of the road so they would have parked on that side of the road crossed over this drain here that runs down the side of the Belgrave Hallam Road and then proceeded across in front of me here to the fence line where they looked and the other cars stopped just down here and they also got out and everybody looked across here towards the west to see the object that was uh, most certainly hovering in the sky and couldn't be missed on that night. As Kelly and Andrew were travelling along the Belgrave Hallam Road she recounts in her book that they reached a point where they passed through a white wall of light and when they passed through the white wall of light it was as if she had actually been turned off she described that it wasn't like time stood still it was like they had actually been turned off and they were traveling at about 100 kilometers an hour and when they came through this wall of light they were traveling at 40 kilometers an hour and they felt very disorientated and there was a strong odor in the car very much similar to vomit now Kelly also related that she doesn't remember passing through a roundabout on the way down that they would have passed through and I'm standing now at the location of that roundabout 
So this is the roundabout that that car should have come through after passing through the wall of light and she has no memory of passing through it. So at this, at this point in time, either the time's gone, there's been a time-space continuum thing that's happened, whatever they've done, the vehicle did not pass through this roundabout or she has no memory of the vehicle passing through a roundabout. Now up here, we'll show you shortly a shot of the hill that she would have come down and the road up to uh, Belgrave South is fairly windy and quite steep. So when they've passed through there, it perhaps is no accident that where the uh, spacecraft put up the wall of light, she's come through on the other side of this roundabout, which is a nice straight stretch of road. So when they've come out, the road is nice and straight. So when they've come back to consciousness and, and orientation again, they've come through uh, onto a straight st section of the road. Just something I've noticed standing here in this geographical area that this side of the hill is quite steep and quite windy. Down here on the other side of the roundabout, about, it's quite flat and a straight section of road. crescent shaped light came out and it came down in a, in a funnel cone like that yeah. blue iridescent light sure and down here another car pulled up over here and a car behind that so there was three cars mm -hmm. six people all up yeah so the, she could see that the, the second group of people had gotten out and they'd walked over to the fence as well now the only reason she could see them was because the third car's headlights illuminated them mm. so they were silhouettes and she yeah, saw them and she thought oh good there's other people have stopped They've seen this as well. So two other cars stopped. Two other cars yes. stopped. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So there was and were they all pulled along that side? They were all pulled along the side here, yes. As on in that the side. The far side. The far yeah, side of the road, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And they've walked across. And they've walked across. Yeah. They come across to here, and then the blue lights come under the object. This is where it starts to get strange. She sees at the bottom of the of the blue the blue light a tall, seven foot, skinny black creature mm -hmm. standing there. Then all of a sudden, others start to appear. Okay. okay, this is where it starts to under get the under the yeah. under the object. Yeah. About 170 meters it was, yeah. back into the back into the paddock. Then the eyes on the creatures lit up red, like a, a stove element. Yeah. That colour. Yeah. They divided into two groups and they they didn't run, they floated across the across the paddock. One group going that way, one group coming this way okay. to where Kelly was. So how many were there in total? There was about eight, as you said, eight um, to ten eight, of those yeah, creatures, creatures split up into two groups. Yeah. Then uh, basically what happened then was they felt a force field, a force like a she described it as like a base at yeah. a rock concert. Yeah. This force came yeah. across the paddock and it hit them in the chest. And they fell over. She was knocked yeah. knocked to her feet. Okay. And then she lost her sight. She couldn't see. Yeah. And the beings were around her and her husband. And the beings started saying things like she said they were really cliche things that the being said, like um, we're a peaceful, we're a peaceful race, but we mean you no harm. Mm. And Kelly's husband said, "Well, why did you knock Kelly over?" Yeah. And she, Kelly started screaming because she's saying these are these are these creatures have no souls. Mm. She's screaming. Now she had the most um, the most violent reaction to the to the encounter because uh, she was a Pentecostal Christian, so she, so her. Her belief system yeah. is around Jesus and yeah. devils and things like that. So she saw these creatures as being of the devils. Yeah. The other people didn't quite have the same experience. Yeah. They didn't have the hysterical yeah. reaction that she had. Yeah. Now, interestingly, the, the strength of the entire case is the fact that it has got independent people. That's yeah. the entire strength to it. If it was just Kelly talking, yeah. sure, it may have happened, yeah. but you've got independent witnesses. Now, as they drove home, she had a uh, triangular scar under her belly button down yeah. here and she gets she developed um they became very ill so she had uh, gynecological problems yeah. she was bleeding and she had to go to hospital for that the other guys in the other car also had um two of them had ligature marks around their ankles where they'd been restrained yeah. and they had puncture three puncture marks uh on their inner left mm. thigh uh, one of the other gentlemen in the second car started suffering severe hair loss. Mm -hmm. yeah. So his hair started falling out. Oh, okay. That's some of the some yeah. of the uh, physical so effects this mark, that they had. So and like the mark on Kelly. So you, there she was abducted. So is there a, like a time there where they can't remember how they got those marks? Yep. I'll explain okay. how it happened there. Yeah. 
when they came down the hill uh, before the roundabout back up here, they drove into what she described as a white wall of light across the road. Okay. So you've got three cars travelling mm. together. The second car was actually the first car. Yeah. It passed through the light first. Yeah. They became disorientated. They felt nauseous. And they, they, their car hit a pole. And they stopped on the side of the road. They got out because everybody was feeling mm. sick. Callie's car and the third car drove past the second car because the people in the second yeah. car said they remember the cars yeah. driving past. Yeah. So, but what happened there was they were going 100 k's down the road. They passed through a white wall of light. Mm. They felt disorientated. Uh, so, from going from 100 k's to 40 k's an hour, and then they felt they felt disorientated, mm. and there was a strong smell of vomit in the car. A really strong odour yeah. and they couldn't work out where this strong yeah. odorous smell was coming from. Then they came and they drove at 40 k's and they just drove home. That's the actual memory she had of the night, was passing yeah. through a wall of light, didn't, didn't yeah. recall Stepping out of the car. this aspect of it, didn't recall the other people, had no memory of that. They got home, there was an hour and a half of missing time, yeah. they got home at 2.30. Yeah. So she left at, uh, at 11.30, uh, 11.45, yeah. got home to your lawn at 2.30. Yeah. So there's an hour and a half of missing time. So is this is Kelly. This is Kelly, yeah, 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 yeah. Kelly and her husband, yeah. Andrew. That's not their real names. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then, then the process of, of recall mm. started, to, and they discussed it on the way home because she did see the UFO. She'd seen it on the way up, yeah. and they'd seen it uh, just before they saw the, the, um, the wall of light as well. So they did see it, and he and her husband said, "Yeah, no, I saw it. Let's, yeah. Yep, saw it." But but she yeah, couldn't remember getting out of the they car. They couldn't remember getting out of the car. They had no memory of getting yeah. out of the car. So they've gone home, and then then she's had um, a series of four visitations in the night, uh, where she's been visited in the night by a tall, skinny being in a black cloak, and uh, she had a strange dream. Mm. So those visitations in the dream, and they went to a, a barbecue at a friend's place and they started talking about religion and they started talking about UFOs. And her husband said, and the guy was skeptical, the friend was skeptical, he said, ah, that's all rubbish. And, and her husband, who, who, who was, uh, he was a Muslim and she was Pentecostal Christian, so it was quite an unusual mix. Yeah. He said, you wouldn't be talking like that if you'd seen what me and Kelly saw. He didn't, wouldn't he, Kelly? You know, like that. And Kelly's like... Uh, what did we see? You know, what did we see? And she said, remember, we were out on the road and we saw the... And at that point there... So he remembered. He remembered. Yeah. At that point there, it all started coming back to her. Mm. And the following... I think it was the following week, she's back up at her friend's house in Mombok again, and she's sitting down and she's starting to... Remember. Remember what yeah. happened and, and, you know, what yeah. was going on. She was physically sick. She yeah. had the, the gynecological yeah. issues. The other women had gynecological issues as yeah. well. So there was these common threads across the the people that had been sure. involved did they did the other people the other two lots of cars did they have memory lapses or did they couldn't account for it i believe that they okay. that they did yeah. um i haven't spoken yeah. to any of these yeah, people yeah yeah sure um now they they what happened was once kelly started thinking i need to get some help for this yeah uh, she started looking around for... She started with like the space societies and things yeah, like that. Yeah. So she rang all them first and she eventually got put onto a Sydney researcher called Bill yeah. Chalker. Yeah. And she rang Bill and she said, look, I've had this experience down here in Victoria. Uh, I need someone to, you know, can you help me or can yeah. you, you know, recommend somebody? And at that time, um, there's another group called Phenomenon Research Australia, which the guy who ran that's name is John Ocatel. Yeah. Now, Bill basically custodied the case to John and yeah. Phenomena Research yeah. Australia. That's where the research started. Sure. He then put some ads in the local ads in the local paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, about specifically worded about yeah. a date, a time, yeah. uh, a location. This, this wasn't until when? when uh, this? It would have been this would have been it happened in ninety three, yeah. would have been ninety four. Yeah, 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 okay. Ninety four, yeah. I would have reckon end of end of ninety three, ninety yeah. start of ninety four. Yeah. He, he placed those ads in the yeah. local papers, be worth trying to find them. Yeah. Um, and people came forward. Yeah. One car came forward. He was a local bank manager, his wife and their female friend who was a yeah. health professional were in yeah. the car. And the third car was a guy known as David, who was a Victorian government law worker of some description. So he took a lot longer to find. They knew yeah. there was a third car there, but they didn't have that person. It was initially yeah. just, just the Cahills, for want of a better yeah. word, and then the three other witnesses. What's the um, idea? So, like, they, 
Ke Kelly's the only one that got abducted, or they all got abducted? They all got abducted. Okay, at what point in that in their narrative do they get abducted? Well, that's the point where the beams yeah. come charging yeah. across the paddock. Yeah. The face reverb yeah. hits them. Yeah. They lose their sight. They can't yeah. see, so they're blinded. Okay. So they've effectively been hobbled. Yeah, yeah. Stunned, if you if, yeah. you, if you like. Yeah. So they've been stunned sure. by the sure. by the um, uh, by the creatures. Yeah. And then when they wake up. When they wake up. Yeah. No, they're in the car. Oh, they're traveling back, the back they're driving and I can and I'm yeah, and I'm yeah. only making an assumption that yeah. that was the same for the other people so but you said they when it hits Kelly her husband says something to them or what yeah that yeah because because the creatures the creatures the creatures were around them yeah and the creatures uh, the creatures started saying things like yeah. don't have to worry yeah. we're a peaceful people she sure. said what they said were really very cliche sure. types of almost sure. you'd say like um, they were rote lines yeah. we're a peaceful people we mean you no harm so that's right before they got abducted that's correct okay cool and then that's the that's yeah. where the whole thing blacks out yeah. and after that that's where it does get that's where you had to start doing you know, like I think she did a regression, which she didn't find the regressions that helpful from what I've read. Um, so they're back in the car, all of them presumably have been put back in the car, and the next thing they're driving home. So the groups of people didn't speak to each other no, at that point? No, no there's sort of... no, no memory of that. Yeah. There was no, because what I, what, what I always thought was, why didn't they all congregate yeah, together? Yeah. Everybody come together. But you're talking about a hundred meter distance between yeah. the people, and yeah. they've just gone across to the fence. Probably looking at this this yeah. beautiful object in the yeah, sky, yeah, yeah. and they could see little silhouettes yeah. standing in the windows of these orange amber yeah. giant lights oh, looking yeah. looking out at them. Yeah. So when you think back to 1993, how how sparsely populated it would have been here. It, still feels fast, it does it, comparatively, yeah. yeah.